Welcome to another episode of Raising the Bar, TKJE Podcast. Today we're going to hear from Dr. Norm Dawson, a renowned professional speaker and advocate for dementia prevention. Dr. Dawson has been deaf for two-thirds of his life, and at the age of 75, he defies expectations by not only living without dementia, but also dedicating his talks to identifying and reducing the risks associated with this condition. Dr. Dawson's life has been shaped by his hearing impairment, and he has fearlessly conquered the barriers that came with it. Despite experiencing a gradual decline in his hearing from age 5 to 27, he defied the odds. At 27, he embraced sign language, embarking on an extraordinary educational journey that led him to achieve three college degrees, including a doctorate in chiropractic. With an entrepreneurial spirit, he successfully established multiple businesses and has been happily married for over 43 years and is a proud father of five children, a testament to his commitment to personal and family growth. Prepare to be inspired and hear how he overcame his obstacles and how you can discover your full potential. Raising the bar, TKJE. Let's go. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Raising the Bar, TKJE podcast. Um, I'm excited for this guest. You heard the uh, the bio. I'm just really excited to have this, this man on. He has become a friend. Um, a colleague, and I've been looking up to him and taking advice from him here and there as well. Um, I'm just really happy to have him on. You guys are going to enjoy this episode. Um, Dr. Norm, how are you today, sir? Hey, Ken, I'm doing great. And thank you so much for inviting me to your interview. I'm really excited about sharing what I'm so passionate about. So I'm doing great. Good, good, good. Well, you know, um, let's not hesitate. Let's just jump right in. And um, first question I want to ask you is, you know, what inspired you to start your business? Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be and, and where it started? Well, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a child. So let me just start there because one year my parents didn't have enough money to give us kids and the family gifts, money for gifts. So we had to make handmade pot holders. We go door to door and we sell these pot holders so we could make Christmas money. Wow. Ever since then, I've been an entrepreneur in a variety of activities and businesses. But the most recent business, which is professional speaking, I came about this because I had always wanted to be a professional speaker, but I never did have a a really solid topic that I thought anybody would be interested in that would be so unique that people would, hey, I want to hear this. So I am 75 years old now. Last year, I thought, you know, I've got about 25 plus years to go. I have so much knowledge and so much information I want to share with people. What am I going to talk about? Well, I got introduced to a woman who is my audiologist because I am deaf, have been deaf for two thirds of my life. Wow. She shared an interview or a seminar with me. And it was about the 12 modifiable risks for developing dementia. And the the highest risk, the biggest modifiable risk is hearing loss. And I thought, wait a minute, hearing loss. No, I I've been deaf for two thirds of my life, but I don't have dementia. What? What? So I watched this seminar and realized there were twelve modifiable risks. Hearing loss being number one. The other eleven risks were something that I had accidentally bumped into. And I thought, you know, I can share this information with a lot of people change a lot of people's lives and be a professional speaker and get paid for it all at the same time. So that's why I started this current business at age 74. Wow. That's, uh, that's really inspiring. Uh, you know, also in, in your, uh, in your bio, um, as I read through it, it's just really, uh, moving what you've been able to accomplish through the years. So, um, definitely respectable and commendable. Um, now as far as the, the business, um, itself, how were you able to overcome initial challenges and setbacks as a startup, as you started your journey, um, those challenges? What were those like, and how did you get over them? Oh, man, there are so many challenges. I don't know where to begin, but I will tell you that one of my first challenges was, of course, not being able to hear in the classroom very much. So I had to constantly ask the teacher, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. And then, of course, going through puberty, when I got my first set of hearing aids, when I was 15 years old, 
having to deal with the challenge of being inadequate, not looking good, and being made fun of by the girls and the bullies and all that stuff. But um, over the years, the challenges have been, am I good enough? Do I have the smartness? Do I have the stamina to stay with it? Uh, when I was at the university, uh, when I got my first bachelor's degree, I got three degrees since I lost my hearing, but the, even the administration did not want to provide sign language interpreters to me because I learned sign language after I lost so much of my hearing, I wouldn't be able to hear the instructors. And I just I took, uh, I took upon myself to really develop myself. And I took a seminar way back in the 70s, and I realized that I have the ultimate choice in what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. And if I made the commitment and stuck with the commitment and was consistent and persistent with it, then I could accomplish anything. And that's what helped me get through uh, most of my adult life, just sticking with it and being committed and realizing that there's going to be ups and downs. Move forward. Wow. Okay. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. So uh, what advice do you have for an aspiring entrepreneur um, who may be looking to turn their passion into a profitable venture? And, you know, right, we hear it all the time. I love doing this. I want to try and make money from it. Um, what do you have on that, Doc? So I think what you're asking me is what advice would I give an, 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 an aspiring entrepreneur to, to make it go, make it profitable, is what I get you saying? Absolutely. Okay. I would say that they should be really clear about their goal, have a really clear vision about their goal, what they want to accomplish, what is, is, what is it going to do for other people that will make other people benefit from whatever this is? Entre entrepreneurial uh, idea is okay, and once they've gotten really clear about their vision and their goal is to ask for help. Mm. I remember in our my wife and I had a previous computer uh, education business, and we didn't ask for help. We didn't get a CPA. We didn't get a mentor. We didn't get anything, and we just kind of clapped after about four years. And I wish I would have gotten professional help. So I would suggest that anybody that's going into business for themselves is to get help, get a mentor, get professional help when needed, uh, be persistent, have a plan, and stick with it. That's, you know, in a nutshell, that's that's what I would advise. That's awesome. Okay. I'll, I'll, a lot of focus there is going to be uh, is going to be helpful. That's really awesome. Well, um, networking. Networking is a part of business and many new businesses, new entrepreneurs, um, they struggle with that. Um, I'm a believer in networking, but what role does networking and building meaningful relationships play in your business and while you've been on this journey? So I think what you asked me is how does networking and, and building relationships work to build a business? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And how were you able to utilize networking to to help your business okay how to utilize networking okay i learned right up front because i've had several businesses is that i wanted to connect with a lot of people and what i first did is i would go out there and, and try to connect with people and i would take my business card to here 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 uh i found out that that did not work <laughs> right but what i found out that worked in networking is that I actually did build relationships over time. I quit going into a networking situation expecting to make a sale, but rather I would go into the relation into the networking activity, just trying to discover what other people need, what they want, mm -hmm. what they're looking for, what inspires them, what helps them get what they want to get. And I would ask a lot of questions. I would discover what these people needed. And over time, I found that people like, hey, you know, Norm is asking questions. He's not trying to hit on me for a sale. And over time, I got to know them. They liked me. And then eventually, I found out what, what their needs were. And then I would say, okay, well, would you be open to your possibility of a conversation? So that's how networking works and how I built, built the relationships in those networking activities. 
Fantastic. I love it. Um, you know, uh, I do a lot of networking myself, and I always encourage people to collect data, right? You want to collect information. Um, and like you said, um, that's very, really, really good advice. Um, asking questions and asking those open ended questions, uh, not the yes or no question, but the tell me about, talk to me a little bit about. So I love it. I love it, Doc. Um, all right. So next question. Um, can you highlight a time when you had to pivot your business model and how you executed that transition successfully? There's a time when I pivoted my business and pivoted it successfully. Hmm. Ah. Okay. Here you go. I am a chiropractor and I, I was in chiropractic practice for a number of years and I knew that my patients needed something more than just chiropractic adjustments so what I offered to them was something that they were all looking for is usually when you go into a doctor's office they expect a prescription or a, a drug sample or something like that but I found out that as a chiropractor nutrition was as, almost as equally important as the chiropractic adjustments so I pivoted by adding a nutrition line to my practice. Okay. It became extremely successful. And I've been, uh, yes. So I think that answers your question, but I can elaborate uh, if not. No, absolutely. So the, the pivot itself, um, with the recent issues um, that we've had with the pandemic and a lot of business owners, they run into different issues and sometimes they find themselves unable to pivot. So uh, that's a fantastic answer. You know, um, what I heard was you added another product to what you were doing um, to ensure that that income continued. Is that correct? That's correct. But now that you're talking about the pandemic, how I pivoted was I could no longer go out and network and build relationships live. So then I adapted uh, Zoom and I started to get on Zoom. Now, initially, Zoom did not have closed captioning. It was hard for me to hear. But uh, eventually, Zoom started adding captioning to uh, the broadcast. And I encouraged people how to set up the captioning anytime I would interview. So then I started to expand. Uh, my professional speaking business by using Zoom and interviewing people and getting to know them in that way. Wow. So, and then I then gradually I'm moving back to live networking, but I do a combination of both. So wow, that's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, Doc, I appreciate it. Um, a couple more. So as far as our listeners and the current entrepreneurs or those that are that are just looking for that nugget, that that one thing that may spark uh, spark their business. Can you give our listeners one piece of business advice that has stuck with you on your journey? One piece of business advice that has stuck with me in my journey, okay? I believe that I made a decision and committed myself to that decision. And that's an agreement that I made with myself. Because hmm. I know that life works to the degree that I keep my agreements with myself and then others. So, for example, when I was in chiropractic college, there was a number of times it was rough. It was hard. And being a deaf person and learning chiropractic terminology and all about anatomy and physiology and all that. Is there a time when I went, I am going to quit. <laughs> right. But I remember when I got on this journey, I was committed to getting through the education. So I realized that, you know, it's just going to be rough. It's going to be tough. But if I just continue the process, that I will eventually get through it. So I committed. And when I make a commitment, I stick to it. I got the reputation of, well, you know, Norm is like a bulldog. When he when he gets a hold of something, he does not let go. So it's it's easy to be distracted and to to uh, get away from the uh, from the goal or from the focus. But I was able to redirect my focus back to my commitment, 
my agreement with myself. Mm. And I believe that when people realize that life works to the degree that they keep their agreements, life works so much better. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, uh, Doug, I appreciate you one, one more time, man, just, just doing this interview and helping out our listeners. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, contact you in any way, maybe for questions or even advice, um, how would they be able to get a hold of you? Well, the best way would be to go to my website, and it's drnormsconnections.com. Okay. Or, Dr. Norms connections.com. That's correct. Fantastic. Well, um, I loved all the information. You, you've definitely filled us with a lot of knowledge on your journey. It's it's inspirational. Um, it's motivating and it's commendable um, for what you've been able to deal with, live through and actually defeat. Um, you have definitely defeated your giants and continued on your dream. So, and, and your journey. So much success to you, doc. And again, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Um, people, uh, I'm sure you learned something, take notes, look up Dr. Norm. He's here to help people and we will talk to you in our next episode. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ken. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. DKJE.